to go first. He's starting Trubbish and just plays a Bridget out of hand pretty easily there. So he's going to be able to get set up, get more Trubbish down. You know, just kind of start executing his game plan, get some EV as well. Uh, not sure if he's going to go for Drampa in this matchup. Probably doesn't seem like Drampa or Tauros are Pokemon he wants to see hit the field here. But yeah, so excited to see both of these players' decks. We've got all these Rev Hollow Trubbish, and he goes for one EV. Yep, which makes sense. Like, you want to, he knows that the Garbodors are really strong in this matchup. EV itself, he has the energy, so uh, since I have one energy for the EV and I immediately get to make it go into the Espeon, I might as well. Right. Um, and then he's just set up, ready to go for the next couple of turns. But we don't see any, we see just, just the one Garbodor in his hand. So this Buzzwool gets a, uh, like a strong energy on it, and then starts spreading damage around. Those Trubbishes can go down, and they're actually kind of a liability. This is how one of the, one of the ways the Buzzwool player can win, is just start spreading damage early on the, the Trubbishes and take a couple of early prizes. Yeah, definitely. Getting that Espeon on the board is really nice, though, so it, it means the Eevee's not going to be sitting there to take an easy prize on. Yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely going to want to start attacking as soon as possible. Just start dealing that early game damage, which is what his deck is pretty good at. So here he's going to do his initial deck search. And he runs a Mew, which hits for weakness. So putting yeah. putting energies on the on the Mew and attacking for weakness on the Trubbishes, he can actually just get a really early knockout here. And he is teched for this matchup a little bit, so... Yeah. Excited to see exactly how this game plays out, how Caleb comes over this hurdle. Yeah, we have uh, two Espeon Garbs as our top two seeds, yeah. right? Yes. So that, that definitely indicates they've been farming this matchup a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so but it is the only ma upset. that matchup. Actually, both both of these decks that we're seeing are the only decks in that we have multiples of. We have two Espeon yeah. Garbs and two Buzzwool Lycanroc, and the other four decks are all different. A Vic of Vulu, uh, Sylveon, a Lucario Zorark, and a Quad Hoopa to round out the top eight. Yeah, and there we go, 120 damage and 30 to the bench yeah. with that Mew. That's that's a that's a strong Mew. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely that's aggressive. Yes, and he kind of has to be. He runs a super run, so even if the uh, the Mew dies, he can shuffle it back in and do it again. And that's that's a lot of damage. Yes, it is. So now Coulter is under some pressure here. Yeah. So he not plays very a, many items the trash avalanche. Yeah. Garbodor, not very many items yet, but enough to take out them. Sybeam will will be Psybeam enough to, to knock it out. Um, Caleb, unfortunately, not having very many cards in his hand. He's gonna attach this energy and ah, play an end. end. Didn't see what that was, so that that is a good last yeah, card to play. Definitely. Draw Giving himself fresh six, six cards. It's like draw six. Uh, I don't think that Coulter's hand was particularly strong either, though. So I think that end there, he probably he's wasn't just, uh, he's okay super with. happy about it. He would rather it be a Cynthia, but yeah. Still better to give yourself cards. Not worth sitting on a dead hand. So, I'm looking through his hand. I think that's an Oricorio? Yeah. I yeah. Just see it. yeah Looks like it. Also very, very strong. So, Caleb has a little, little game this so far. Yeah, he went for that really aggressive play in the beginning, and now he's going to have to kind of set something else up to back it up with. An Ultra Ball, probably for a backup attacker here. I would actually expect it to be the, the Remoraid yes. to set up a low on hand. Let's get this going. That's a good choice. Yeah, he wants to get his draw engine set up for the rest of the game. And this Buzzwool... I'm just going to hit, hit, hit for some six, 30 points of damage, a couple of things. Uh, he's really hoping, it looks like on Caleb's end, that we don't get a Garbotoxin Garbodor, or Garbodor on the on the battlefield. So that way he can Lele next turn. It looked like he had an Ultra Ball and a non-supporter in hand, so he draws, discards whatever, grabs the Lele into some some sort of supporter, whether it be a Sycamore or Cynthia. Sitting on an Ultra Ball sometimes when the Garb player does have a Trubbish down like this that could evolve into Garb, like you said, is kind of risky. Sometimes you might want to go for the preemptive Lele just in case Garb comes down. 
Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't have enough cards to do that. Yeah. He would have had to discord, discard the Oricorio in order to do that. So it's definitely and a it's a he big, big card that he needs in this matchup. It's definitely a thought he might have had if he were able to do so. Because, I was going to say, does he play Field Blowers? Caleb doesn't play any Field Blower. And I think we're seeing that in a lot of lists during this tournament, is kind of cutting Field Blower. So, we do see the Garbatoxin come down. No tool on it yet. Yeah, no tool yet, but it is on the board. Saving that Trubbish from being sniped and knocked out by the Buzzwell next turn. It's looking through his discard. Making some counts. He did draw an in and a float stone. Floatstone on the on the Buzzwool is interesting uh, because if he put that on the Remoraid instead, hits a Choice Band and a Strong Energy, he actually can knock out the Espeon. E, which is 80, yeah, exactly knock out the Espeon if he makes that line. He might say me putting it to 20 is fine because I can eventually I can snipe it later on. But we do have a couple of prizes taken. By Coulter. Which so. is kind of to be expected, but that Espeon is very heavily damaged, so Caleb is going to so be So is that to Garbodor, to be honest. Yeah. A couple more uh, jet punches, and both of them are going to come down. Yeah, he's going to be able to grab some prizes really quick here. Really quickly here, and even up this count. So, although, although it looks a little bleak, uh, Caleb's definitely... Not out of it by any means. It's about to take three prizes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, not right this very second. That's pretty cool. Uh, we might be able to. Yeah, well, we're gonna get a projector set up on. Oh, I, th I think he wants on to do site. it now. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to. Yeah. On site, so that way those who are here watching the venue can actually watch the game. Yeah, which is really awesome. Uh, I think because the VGC stream is done. Using yeah, the, the VGC stream just finished, so we gotta steal it. All right, so sorry about that interruption, but it does yeah. look like. Caleb's just gonna pick up his cards. Yeah, Coulter's gonna he take him on. Oh man. Yeah, hopefully uh, we can get a more interesting matchup next round, but didn't really anticipate this one being such a slaughter, at least that first game one, but maybe Caleb can figure something else out and have a new game plan and really take game two and make this pretty close. Yeah, Coulter had just a very fast start, and yeah, Caleb stumbled just a little bit. Yeah. That turn one Bridget, getting all those resources out, and uh, Caleb didn't really have anything going on. Yeah, it was huge. But that's Pokemon. That, yeah, that is Pokemon, I mean, and there matchups are, are a thing. very one-sided <laughs> matchups sometimes. And I feel, uh, like I said, like today there's been a lot. I mean, there was also Bulu and Sylveon in top eight, and that's not a good matchup. Yeah, like, there's the Espeon guard. We have another Espeon guard that Espeon is playing against Hoopa. Quad Hoopa. We not have good. Buzzwool versus Lucario Zorak, which is going to be a 50-50 matchup that we've, we've seen, seen a lot of. And we have a Vicavolt Sylveon matchup. Yeah. Like It was tough to choose, uh, definitely tough to choose the, the right top eight matchup for the stream. So we decided to put the people that we haven't seen at all because yes. I think every every seen. single person on yeah, else we, outside of I think, no, I think Jake all Morgan and Hunter Butler we haven't seen yet. We definitely saw Hunter. Did we? But he played against John Ng. Yes, yes he did. <laughs> we yes. might not have seen Jake Morgan. We, I don't think we've seen Jake, but this is the matchup that we haven't seen anybody on. So that's how we chose the matchup for you wondering at home. We figured if all of the matchups are kind of either one-sided or we've seen a lot of, Let's pick the one we haven't seen the players, give them a little time to shine. Definitely. And Caleb could figure something out. I mean, like we saw um, 
Wait, Greninja beat Boo yesterday. Right? Yeah, that was, yeah. yep. <laughs> yeah, Joe, uh, Joe took the win yeah. versus, uh, and that's always exciting. That's yeah. like that makes the best dream Uprising. matches when the underdog, the unfavored deck wins. That yes. actually ends up being the best if that scenario happens. But Coulter opened Tauros, so this is actually might really be kinda, good for Caleb. Might be kinda good Unfortunately, for Caleb. Caleb also opened up with a pseudo Wudo. Yeah. Not ideal. No. He really wishes that was a buzzle. Right. But As I you mean see, Ultra Balling and putting the buzzle right to the bottom. Having that Tauros on the board though could spell out be a some huge prizes liability. for yes. Caleb at some point in the game. Absolutely. All right, so we're trying to set up the projector here at the same time. So you got me. Uh, Caleb is going to be searching his deck with Ultra Ball, doing his initial search. And I think what looks like he's going for there might be a Rock Ruff. Uh, he might decide to take the Rock Ruff, but he just wants to see what's in his deck first of all. Just kind of take stock of things. Say, what am I working with this game? This is an important game. Every match in top eight uh, feels like it has so much pressure attached, just because of you know the points and the prize money associated. Pretty much doubles every time you win, making each game more important than the last. All of these players, day one, day two, it's coming down to this game right now so far. And he goes with the Rock Ruff, gets the strong. And that's a Sycamore, that's the, that's the alternate art Sycamore. Just going lightning fast here. Going to draw seven cards. Three energies here in his hand. And doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot else. I don't see any more basics, and he's just going to pass the turn over to Coulter. Who, I don't see a raw Bridget in his hand this turn. Not this game. So he's got a little bit of a choice to make here. He has an Ultra Ball. He could get... He could get... Uh, Lele for a Bridget and get his setup going here. Discarding a Guzma and something else there. And goes for an Eevee. Choice Man, Floatstone, and he's got to give Caleb six new cards as well as himself. See if he can get some Trubbishes down because that's really what he wants here. Uh, either that or a Psychic Energy to get that Espeon out of the deck. But he is going to be able to retreat this Tauros, so it's not going to be sitting in the active for too much longer. And he does get the Psychic Energy for the Espeon, he's going to quickly Energy Evolution and grab that out of the deck. Also, this is his first search, so he's going to take a second to check and see what's happening. What he's got in deck for the rest of the game. Just kind of counting resources. Like I said, they actually have more time in top eight than, uh, than normal. Right, sorry for the moment of radio silence, guys. Just trying to figure out the projection, the projection again here for for folks here in the venue who want to watch the stream. Yes. And now, yes, we see that Espeon coming into the active and confusion. Or uh, psychic, I believe. I'm going to confuse. I was going to say it should be placed upside down because that attack does cause confusion. Oh no, the monitor just went out. So oh, it came back. It's good. We're good. It came back. <laughs> yeah, it uh, scared me for a moment there, but we are back. That 
Tsuru Woro is very confused. It does not know what's going on. And we're going to see a Lele here from Caleb. Uh, if he has the Lycan Rock, he might be considering Guzma, but I don't, I don't think that's what's going to happen here. So he might just be getting a draw supporter. Not too sure what the rest of his hand is. Only two cards. So yeah, he gets a Sycamore. Probably just going to let this Sudowoodo sit here and soak up a couple hits. See what he gets off of his draw here. He has a Max Elixir. So he could consider using that on the Buzzwool before he Sycamores. I think that would definitely be the play. Unfortunately, he does have the two energy in his hand, but still has a lot remaining in deck, so. And that's gonna be a fail on the Elixir. Yeah, the three energies in hand. I think he's got to be thinking twice about this card. I need a full screen. The, the, the fatal flaw of your plan. It didn't work? No, it, it, it's over there. Just... Alright, yeah, I just want to apologize again to you guys for that little interruption there, but I'm still here. <laughs> and yeah, so we got too strong on that small, tiny little rock rough now. Uh, Brookwood Hill is going to try to get another basic, probably another rock rough. Is what I would have to guess. I mean, he might go for Remoraid. I don't believe he has Remoraid out. Oh, he's going to get Reggie Rock. Okay. Okay, so he has a plan here. I mean, that Rock Rock does have a choice band and two strongs on it, so if he can evolve, it's, it's dishing out a lot of damage. He has Remoraid in hand as well, and he does have the Lycan Rock. But he's not going to use the ability. Is he going for a GX attack here? But he also can't retreat Sudo Widow at this point. So I don't think he has a float stone in hand. Well, he does play four. Yeah, I don't see it in his hand there. And then GX attack would only be doing 180 at any rate. So that wouldn't be the play either way, but that Lycan Rock is ready to go, and it is stacked with augmented damage. Oh, it would be doing 190 with the Reggie Rock, uh, I believe. <laughs> so it's actually close. <laughs> Did we get it figured out? Yeah. Okay. So now I think we've got this projection issue solved. And we have Josh back. So we see a Sycamore here from Coulter. Oh, he's thinking about it though. About I it. don't know why not. Okay, he doesn't want to attach the Floatstone to the Trubbish. Apparently he's not going for the ability lock right now. He maybe wants to keep that open for a choice band. Yep. And fetches another Trubbish, so that's good for him. Definitely was yep. looking for that second He did trubbish. draw a Travelanche. Trash the Lanch. <laughs> and Parallel City. So definitely like that Lele. Decisions. What do I do? I mean, that Lele has got to go. Yeah. But he doesn't want to discard the Buzzwool, and he doesn't want to he discard doesn't... the Reggie Rock, and he doesn't want to discard the Remoraine, and he definitely doesn't want to discard the Light Gun Rock. Yeah. This is a tough choice. Yeah. He's thinking, thinking the Reggie Rock is going to be the one to hit the bin. Yeah, I think it's what? probably the least valuable. Yeah. I mean, like keeping a Lele, like there's there's a debate oh, to it, he's keeping it because you can attach uh, energies to it and then hit back <laughs> for, can't for a lot. You energies to it, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad attacker. That's definitely true, and it's it's pretty efficient. But I'm I'm a little surprised that he yeah. decided to get rid of the Buzzwool instead of the Lele. 
Caleb has a plan. He's going to try to execute it. I guess he was just thinking that psychic weakness is just too much. <laughs> too much for that buzz wheel to allow, to be allowed to remain on the board. All right, yeah, we see a lot of strong energies on that Lycan Rock. He is ready to hit really hard. He says, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to punch you real hard. It's a strong, strong, strong Lycan Rock. Very strong, yes, yeah, strong, strong, strong. Much strong. Very strong, yeah. Much strong, much wow. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> and we see the Espeon go down. I don't want to do and Caleb taking two prizes. Yeah, so that was powerful. Very powerful, but... And see, this is, I just don't think this matchup is as one-sided as uh, we might have been yeah. led to believe. I think it is as one-sided. As one I just think Kay, uh, Coulter <laughs> just hasn't drawn his uh, his Garbodors yet and right? gone I, on that plan yet. Well, see, I think I, I played Espeon Garb like a bunch. It's one of the decks that I've been playing this season. Um, and I think that a lot of times it can just brick like that. Yep. Like often whiffing stuff, I feel like it has a lot of... It doesn't have a very good draw engine, first of all. You don't have Octillery, you don't have Zorak, you don't have Varangaroo. Yeah. Um, it's kind of rough. It's, it can be tough sometimes to get the right thing going at the right time, the yes. right attacker, the right energy. Uh, and also pretty, reli uh, pretty reliant on your opponent having items in the discard. I mean, Espeon I mean, Once you know good. that it's a thing, you can kind of play around it for the most part. Yeah. There's... there's there's a lot of items that you don't have to play. You just do because it makes it better. But if it's the yeah. downside with those, uh, if you're going to take 10 more damage, like... You might think twice. Yeah. You might Be think twice and just play it a little bit slower. I think the strategy playing against it for a lot of players is definitely, like you said, to try to, to halt or like, slow down their item usage in the yep. beginning. I'm not going to max Lixir on turn one a right. bunch of times. I'm just going to go a little bit slower. Me putting down my, my tools is okay because he has to field blower him to hit the bin. So they're not... When I play them, they're not actually items in the discard yet. Possible, but not yeah. yet. And then... Or only one or two times, make it to where they can only do 30, 40 damage. Like, try to go through the beginning of the game using as few and, items as yeah. possible. But then there's also a point where they reach, they take a couple prizes with the low item count. And then you can just kind of go crazy. You're just like, there's yeah. a point where it's like... It doesn't matter if no, they can hit me in one shot because right. they're going to do it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, so you just kind of go crazy with the items in the second half of the game. Exactly. Oh, so Coulter's going to hit that Lycan Rock for 60. But it's it's so scary there. Wow. That thing is stacked. Yeah. He says, I'm going to Sycamore. We're going to get some good... Some good stuff. Good cards. Hopefully enough to, to get me to win this game. I'm ahead on prizes. Let's just keep the momentum going. See so Brooklyn Hill. I mean, he also still has Dangerous Rogue for a second Espeon if Coulter even decides to go that route. I mean, he can hit, like... <laughs> like, that thing is taking down anything on Coulter. The Lele, part. even. Yeah, like, anything. if he, like, Guzma's the Lele, and then GX attacks and knocks it out, and then all of a sudden everything's weak to the... Or then his Taurus is weak, and then... You get it. Yeah, with Claw Slash, this thing is doing 200. Just with Claw Slash. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's so insane. <laughs> Even, is it more than? No, it's, it's, it's 200 because there's no Regirock. Because it's 2, yeah, 4, 60, exactly. plus the 30 yeah. is 90, 110 plus 90. Because he, and he 90, was able yeah. to knock out the Espeon with the Claw Slash. Base damage of 110. I'm dealing 200 damage. Bumped up to 200. That's <laughs> so many. That's pretty crazy. All right, we do see our Max Elixir. <clears throat> Garbodor are dealing a little bit more damage. Yeah, there's going to be a couple items in the discard there. I can see. Is that an energy switch? Yeah, a one of energy switch. 
He says, I'm going to power up this buzz swool. I'm going to Bissell hand a couple of times. You don't have a garbotoxin <laughs> yet. We're going to keep this engine going while I can. Yeah, yeah Coulter hasn't been able to really make use, good use of garbotoxin yet yeah. in this series. It doesn't shut off much in this series. Just no. the... Just the uh, Lele, Bloodthirsty Eyes, and Octillery. Yeah. Abyssal hand, but yeah, those, oh, those those are kind of a big deal. It depends on uh, the scenario, but they, those can be a big deal. Yeah, it's hard to make the decision on whether you want the Garbatoxin to kind of shut off those abilities, or if you want to be more aggressive and use the other Garbador to just try to one-shot him. Well, right now, that's going to have to be his strategy, because he has this one trash lanch, but I'm, I'm assuming it's going to go down here. And then he's going to need a, an attacker Probably for taking next 200 turn. damage, yeah. <laughs> and he's he's down it goes. He's going to need an attacker for next turn, so he kind of needs this Trubbish to evolve in a trash lanch. Um, he could come up and hit it with a Lele. That's definitely still an option. But Caleb's down to three prizes, and it's looking like he's going to take this game. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, he definitely he did just take the Lele route and kind of smacked into this Lycan Rock, which has now taken a total of a crap ton of damage. Yes, <laughs> we, we will consider that a crap ton. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it has taken what 160. Yeah. Quick maths. It's almost dead. Ooh, we see the Guzma. Ooh. Bringing up the Tauros. I'm gonna bring up this thing that has free retreat. I'm gonna go down to one prize. We're gonna. Bloodthirsty Eyes of Lele. Ooh, knock it out with the Buzzwool. I like this play. Yeah, he and just says, yeah, I'm done. That, that was a great turn. That was <laughs> brutal. Oh my gosh, and we're 1-1. One, one. So this didn't Caleb turn out says, to be too bad of a matchup after yeah, all. Caleb says, I ain't going down without a fight. No, nope, All you haters out there, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> not going to let this one go so easily. 12-1 game count. Hog champ. Pog champ. Here we are in game three in our first top eight game. Who's gonna take it? Yep. Well, while, while we're waiting for them to shuffle up, I'm gonna go see if any of the other matchups is finished. Sure. See if we can get a report for you guys on live reporting on what's Sounds happened so good. far. Yeah, so he's checking for the other results just so we can uh, check on the other games in top eight. But yeah, a lot riding on this one here, and it's nice and exciting that it has come down to a game three. I'm glad we didn't just see a quick 2-0 or something like that so we can make this an interesting match. Both players playing very well. They know that a lot is on the line, and they want to win it all. They are not messing around. They've been through two long, grueling days of play. So many rounds, 14. And, uh, yeah, they don't want it to all end here. They want to make it all the way to the finals. <laughs> so we just got in that in the two versus seven seed, which was Xander versus Hunter, Xander ended up taking the win there. So That was pretty fast. It was pretty fast. Uh, it was Espeon Garb versus Quad Koopa. Koopa, and Garb's hit for a lot, so and aren't GXs. So it's not super surprising that that happened. Yeah, that's that's kind of to be expected in that matchup for sure. And then, so this game's starting off. We see an Oricorio lead and an Eevee lead. Eevee's pretty normally for for Coulter. Uh, he's happy to go first and just hopefully get another energy. And just go first and get a 200 HP stage one yeah. into play. And actually, it doesn't look like he has the psychic energy yet. So if he that doesn't yet. draw it, that Eevee's just going to die. Oh, my that, A bus is just going to hit it. For sure. It's going to get tickled, <laughs> and it's going to faint real quick. It's going down. But he has a Lele. He might go for Bridget here, even though he doesn't have the psychic, and just kind of let that Eevee go down, get another Eevee, get some Trubbish. You gotta imagine that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, that's the expectation. We'll we'll find out. He the other route is to go for a Cynthia or a draw supporter. Maybe really hope that he hits the psychic. Really hope that he hits some trubbish. But I think the Bridget uh, the Bridget play is probably the best. Yes.
but let's see what happens. <laughs> Rip Hoopa, indeed. It was a good run. It was a good run. It's a good run. We had a Hoopa. a Hoopa in top eight, and I think we had one or two in top 16. We did, yeah. As well, so it actually had a really good showing here this weekend. I think weekend. Danny Altavilla made top 16, I think. Yep. Oh, all right, so yeah, he does go for the Bridget there. Yeah. Gets two Trubbish, second EV. Yeah, but this means that he doesn't have the Psychic Energy no. above that Eevee. If Caleb gets a, a Buzz Swole with an Energy, that's one fainted Eevee. Definitely, and uh, placing 30 on the bench one, it would be nice for him as well. But he has to get kind of a lot. Oh, he just drew the Float Stone, actually, off the top there. Yeah. So Float Stone, he has an Ultra, he can Ultra Ball for it. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a supporter or he's got an Octillery there. First start with this and we're gonna see what's going on. Perfect. Step one. What's in my decks? So that way Perfect. I don't accidentally discard the wrong pick. Because if he discards the artillery yes. and that's the other one's prized, then he gets really sad. So yes. he's gonna he's gonna look first. So yeah, I'm not sure if he has a supporter. So you might need to use that ultra ball for a Lele. Yeah. Uh, his one Lele if that's in there. Seeing a lot of uh, players go the down on Lele counts. Yes. yes. Bending him down. Uh, used to be like every deck ran three. Three, yeah. Sometimes even four. Uh, I think <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia really helped with that. Cynthia I think is and that, Zorak with trade. Yeah, and Zorak for trade. Really helped with cutting down how many Lele's decks needed. Lowering the value of everyone's favorite card. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. So he gets Buzzwool. And now I think he's considering playing the Ultra Ball. Yes. S still kind of looking through. Like you said, this is an important game three. He doesn't want to take any chance of taking the wrong thing. Yeah. Getting rid of Guzma. Is that Lucario? Like, Guzma's interesting. Like, if he had... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So he, do he doesn't have the energy. But if he had the energy, he could have Guzma'd the uh, EV. Oh, the EV with the energy. The energy, mm -hmm. and then taking the knockout. And that, that would have been huge. Would've unfortunately, been while he had, like, all of the parts he needed, he <gasps> was missing, unfortunately, one of the six and the energy. So he's Cynthia, hopefully hitting this energy to take a, a nice, quick knockout on this active EV. Uh, there's Max Lixer. Now, the thing with no Max energy. Lixer is that with Gerberdors, that can be kind of rough. He's got to go for it, though. Yeah. Casted. And if he doesn't hit it, it's devastating, oh, and he doesn't. Oh, no. That is so de That's his 10 damage in the discard for no reason, yeah, no benefit, so no prize brutal. this turn. Only because it was turn oh, one. That's so bad. Yeah, that was rough. The this, feel bads. This could have been such a nice turn, but everything went so wrong. Yes. So he's just going to put this Lele in the active and be like, well, I'm going to pass. Yeah. I whiffed on energy. Too bad you can't get strong off Elixir. Yeah. Oh, so brutal. Huge loss of tempo there. But yeah, so that we see uh, Coulter. He says, I'm just going to end this hand away. We're going to evolve my, my Garbodor into Garbotoxin. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's so excited. I can feel the <laughs> sigh of relief He's like, Thank from God. the other side of the convention center. He didn't expect that EV to live, I'm, yeah. I'm guessing. Brutal. So. And that was an N. Yep. And he's got yep. the energy Hit here. Hit the energy this time. Let's get that Espeon out. Um, the card next to the Remoraid, we have a, on, on that side, we have a Buzzwool. A rock rough and an org cordio on Caleb's side. Yeah. yeah, that no energy attachment was just so awful. I I feel like this is Coulter's game now from that. Yeah, there's a Garbotoxin activated, so yep. no Lele, no Bloodthirsty Eyes, no Octillery. Uh, a, little, a little bit of a card fumble. Judge says, here, let me shuffle that for you. <laughs> Yeah, in order to deal with this Garboder, Caleb is going to have to Guzma that thing up and knock it out because yes. he just doesn't play any field blower. 
had me surprise melt this night. You're, I get to take a prize, right? And I'm like, oh my god. We're back. Well, we should probably turn Mike up all the way. Yes. All right. But yeah, so he's thinking and trying to figure out what he's what he's supposed to do here. Kind of awkward, so he's just gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna start with with the hill. We're gonna try to set up a little bit more. His board is pretty good though. He has a decent board. He has to start taking prizes though. Because if he doesn't yep. start taking prizes, Coulter's just gonna steamroll him because oh, the, of lame. weakness. So now now is the point where Caleb doesn't get any extra free turns. This this is it. He had a free turn last turn where he, he could have could have had a free prize and whiffed and it's brutal. Max Lixler is a card of variance. Caleb opting for only nine fighting energy, so let's run ten to help with that Max Lixler utilization. Oh, there he has the Guzma. Yep. We're gonna see the play that could have happened last turn. Yeah, he did he does have the energy now off the end. Mm -hmm. So he's is, is able to, to play some energy and It might just be too little too late, though. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if it's 30 on the Garbodor. Um, I'm going to soften up that Espeon. Yeah. Because that thing is tough to knock out. I mean, we saw him do 200 with the Lycanroc last game, but that, that doesn't happen very easily. <laughs> no, no, it does not. That was a pretty fortunate circumstance to see that last game. So I, I, I like softening it up. He knows Coulter is going to bring it into the active Probably confused, disposable. <laughs> okay. Two knockout, one prize on Caleb's side. And the double colorless on the Espeon. Okay, so he does have that. Yes. So that's going to be... A knockout coming back on that buzzsaw. This man hits real hard. Feels bad. Poor buzzsaw. One for two prize trade is not the greatest. Yes, because it does. It's going to be 90. Doubled is 180. Buzzsaw is 190. Actually, that's just short. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. Actually. Oh, but he has the choice band, so that, choice that, that'll band. do it. Okay. Yeah. Yep, just I see that choice band there. It was like, I think it's knockout. Wait. Yeah, it's good. Nope, nope, it is. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't even have a face yet. He's counting. <laughs> yeah, he's just I making think. sure. Yeah. He's going to go sure. 60, just 90, just 120 double, just 240. <laughs> Oh, he's going to use uh, Divide GX. Got it. Interesting. Yeah, this Espeon is not um, not really under too much threat from this Buzz Bowl. So. Hmm. Very curious about that play. He softens up each Buzz Bowl a little bit, so 180s do now knock it out if he doesn't have the choice band. Hmm. And uh, he just probably doesn't want to see that lichen rock. He doesn't, like, this yeah. buzzwell can be knocked out pretty much any time by any. By anything. Anything from Coulter. So it's not a huge priority. <laughs> yeah, Mew doesn't knock it out yet. I, I'm curious what the Ori Corio count is. To yeah, see, well, to see how, many, how much damage way. it does. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he's just gonna grab another rock rock yeah. off this Brooklyn Hill. Yeah, he wants to. Get, he'd much rather be attacking with like a rock. Yes. Yeah. I guess Mew can't even attack yet. Okay. Wow. Alex won. Yep. First so we have Simon. another match result. I mean, we kind of expected that because yeah. it was Sylveon versus Bulu, but Alex is in another top four. Yep. Alex Hill, moving on to second in a row at least and then I think he actually top aided the one before that I think so 
So this is. He, he's on a he's on a yeah, tear. He, him and Joe. Yeah, Joe Alex just Joe. barely missing cut. I know. Needed one more win. Cup little bit too many too many ties. But Simon is Simon is down. Yeah. So Alex and Joe are both players that are um, on crazy hot streaks right now. And for Alex, it's, it's really nice. It's kind of a long time coming. He's been playing Pokemon for a while. Yep. You see the tree? It looks like Oricorio is going to say, I'm going to put 60 on you. So that answers my question that I was just asking. Is how much damage does Oricorio do? 60. Yeah. yeah, this looks rough for Caleb. But I think the loss of that uh, that divide play actually is being coming in very clutch for Coulter. Yes, yes it is. Mm. And unfortunately, there's there's no field blowers, so no. It is a card that Caleb decided not to play, which would be very very strong here. I think Garbo Garboder wasn't really on too many people's radar coming no. into the day. I mean, into the tournament, into day two and uh, into day one too. Yeah, so a lot of lists actually didn't include blower, and if they did, it was usually just maybe one one copy of blower. Yep. But most of the lists we've seen actually don't play any. Yeah, none at all. I think uh, just saying, like, you know what, I'm already going to lose this matchup lose anyway, this matchup so I'm not going to attack for most it. Most of yeah. the time. And the times that uh, the Buzzwool player, like a rock player, is going to win are field blower is probably not going to come into play there. It's when they take an early lead on prizes. Yep. It's when the Espeon player draws dead. So. Yep, exactly. <laughs> See, another elixir miss. Oh, yeah. Caleb. I'm so sorry. The stream curse. It is a stream curse. Elixir fails. Left Elixir and right. does not hit if you are on. If you're on stream. If you're on stream. So Coulter just needs to figure out how he's going to close out this game. Both players playing this matchup very well, I think. Yeah, um, I think that it's well played from both sides. Caleb times. is, I think it's way in Colt's favor, like we were talking, yeah. and so this is almost an autopilot for him, where he just gets to just execute his plan. Hasn't had a lot of like really tough decisions on like what I do. That divide GX play was very good. Mm -hmm. um, it really did shut off uh, Caleb's only way of getting back in, which is knock out the Espeon, a couple yeah. max elixirs, and then hope that the next Espeon isn't able to to pick it off. And those extra couple points of damage just really shuts that off. Um, and then Caleb, on the other hand, he's just he's playing as optimally as he possibly can. He is really just trying to get any any little bit of advantage he can here. He's just not looking good because no. his matchup is just so one-sided. Thirty thirty with the buzzwool again. Not much else that turn. Yeah, and the buzzwool is just gonna. But you're never eat. you're never gonna scoop game three and top eight of the no. regionals. You're gonna play it all the way to the final. Make sure your opponent doesn't accidentally say the wrong attack name. Yep. Because um, that was the thing that happened. That's the thing. That could happen. <laughs> okay, three energies in hand for Coulter. Yes. Not too sure what else is in his hand, but he's in such a good spot. I don't even think he cares at this point if the Cespion goes down, because Trashland should be able to just finish the game for him. Yeah, absolutely. He's thinking about how he wants to. Thinking about retreating it just to save it. Yeah. Which... I don't know. Like that's that's kind of awkward. Like I think it's fine losing it. You're so head on prizes. You get to take two here. Even if they do promote a lichen rock, like. He's at the spot where he might be starting to play over cautiously because he knows he's in a good spot and he knows this game is his to win. So sometimes that can cause the player to become over cautious yeah. and maybe overthink things a little bit too much and not be willing he's to really take think risks. Really thinking it, he's just like, oh. like if if I, I'd have to figure out what the the trash count is to see if uh, if the trash if like the trash can kit one shot the yeah. the bus like wall, definitely I like, retreating. I but. like taking the knockout with this damage as found. It's fine if it gets knocked out. I I think that was definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of retreating it, I mean, why retreat it? He is, sure, he knocks out the Cespion, but then you have that, that Garboder on the bench. Doing, yeah. uh, and we're looking at his anything. hand, and he has two choice spans, an Ultra Ball that doesn't do anything in this situation. Like he can evolve it, but still not attack, and a Remoraid. Cool. So that's going to that's gonna be the game. There's that's nothing it. nothing he can do. 
and I'm gonna see him put his hand down probably. He's gonna get the lichen rock, I guess. Yeah, like you get above the lichen rock. Um, six. Only does 18, so doesn't quite knock it out. He gets one more turn, I guess. He's gonna Brooklet Hill. Wouldn't surprise me if grabs. No, yeah, he just does. He's out of targets. And just play the Remorade, I guess. I don't see what reason not to. All right, so that's the end of the game, and we see Coulter take game three against Caleb, and he's going to be moving on to.